Okay, y'all. So last week we talked about like really just um, being yourself, how to um, like present yourself really to like build these connections. Um, and we really, really went over like being real, being vulnerable and like things like that. But um, this week I wanted to talk to y'all about how I do my RCMs. Like who do I go to to RCM? So we already know every day in your IPAs, you should be doing your birthdays and your story replies. Um, you can do your story replies multiple times a day because there's going to be people who update their story throughout the day. The same person is going to update their story throughout the day. And if they post in their story a lot, that's a really great way for you to keep that connection going, keep a conversation going. Um, but other, aside from that, I do not or see them like on my news feed. So like I don't really, I mean, obviously sometimes I do, but like when I am specifically sitting down do RCMs because I think it's important to be intentional and like sit down a time to do it. Um, I go to my friends list. So I pretty much every day go through my friends list because I'm maxed out at friends. So I want to be able to add new people. Um, but I just go through and you will be so shocked to see like how many people haven't posted in forever. So we went over this too last week, like delete people, delete people you don't relate to, delete people who have like no profile picture and haven't posted in a month. Like don't be afraid to delete people. So I do that while I'm looking for who I want to RCM. So I just go through then I pick a letter. I will literally pick a random letter and I will go through and I kind of RCM until like I am tired of scrolling through their page. I will literally scroll through and RCM on like five different things. Um, not, not mess. Okay. I, I lie. I'm reacting and commenting. I'm not messaging about every post, but um, I will comment on a few posts and then pick a post that I want to actually like RCM them on. Um, I like to keep them in mind. Um, honestly, sometimes I will write notes in my phone about who I've RCM because um this one time I was doing a voice message to a customer and her name was Veronica I called her Victoria and I felt so stupid and so now I will literally write down the names of my like people who I'm really really trying to get I'm really RCMing for that week I will write down their names like I don't know because I don't want to forget their kids names when we're talking and I want to be able to actually retain what I learned about them and make a genuine connection um so that's kind of what I do as far as like who do I RCM if I look on their page and I can't relate like I told you guys I just delete them um they haven't posted in a long time and they just share memes or whatever um also I'm going to talk to you guys about groups but I'm just going to go through a little bit of tips on like building a connection like outside of RCM. So um, a, a lot of us like resist sharing stuff on Facebook because, you know, we've already told y'all it's against Facebook algorithm law. Don't be sharing all kinds of stuff on your page or whatever. So if you do decide, okay, this is funny. Okay, I relate to this. And you're going to share it and you get a lot of interaction on it. Go in there and go start conversations with people who comment on this meme or whatever. But then a day or two later, go remove it. But keep in mind those people that you had connected with because you share that now you know okay they're related to that too but another really cool thing is to save that meme or that status copy and paste the status or screenshot it and post it yourself so people are going to like relate to you as far as like oh she posts funny memes oh she posts inspirational stuff and your post is going to be the one that's being shared and liked and commented on versus someone else's so that's a really big tip I have for y'all but, um, Josh, you want to go ahead and go and talk about what you want to talk about a little bit, and then I'll jump in and go, um, I want to dive like really into groups and growing your business, like outside of your area. Yeah. I just wanted to touch on what you said about like how you do more of your RCMs through stories. I personally, that's usually how I get into their inbox. I don't like bring up a post that they posted just because, I feel like, okay, think about when you make a post on Facebook, you're like, oh, I need to take a hundred pictures to find the perfect picture. Like it's more like, I guess more of like a serious post versus like on the stories, you see more of like behind the scenes of their life, what they're eating, what they're doing, like things like that. I just feel like you can go and have a more organic conversation going in from the stories. Um, so that's what I wanted to touch on on there. Um, you can just go ahead and dive into that because I'm gonna go more into like the, um, like how to create content, like what I do for creating content. So if you want to just start on your end and then I'll just finish with this. Okay, so that's something too that I do as well. Like if I literally feel forced to do the RCM, like if I know I connect with this person, I relate to them, um, but I just cannot figure out a way to slip in their inbox like Susie at the beach or whatever 
it just sounds so forced. I will do a story reply and I'll start that way. Or I start conversations in the comments first and then slowly progress to their inbox because I feel like it's not as forced. I feel like it's not as weird. Um, you know, I don't want them to think that I'm in any sort of way like um, just going after them to get a sale. So um, I do a lot of conversations and comments for slip into their messenger. But okay, so I want to talk to you guys about groups. If you I have so many of my team, I'm just gonna let y'all know that I might get distracted because she's tearing everything up right here, all my notes and stuff. But um, so I have so many of my team that's like, um, you know, no one comments on my Facebook anymore. No one wants to thrive. Um, no one's liking any of my stuff. I've RCM and no one's replying guys literally you have the world at your fingertips so us uh louisiana girls when the hurricane hit we were all so scared we were like oh my gosh no one is going to buy thrive because everyone just got their homes and their lives destroyed so um we started this thing where we were like hardcore reaching people outside of Louisiana and the way that we did that was groups so we would go join groups um I would say I personally like five ten thousand members like I want a very very active group where I'm not going to see the same people in the group um also bigger groups like that personally in my experience they're not as hard on um or judgy on people who do MLMs so Oh my gosh, she just almost fell. So I joined bigger groups um, and I do not post about Thrive. A lot of my girls um, at first were like, wait, but what do I post about? Like, do I, do I go in there and introduce, hey, I sell Thrive? No, absolutely not. Do not say anything about Thrive. Honestly, people get kicked out of groups for even wearing their DFT in their pictures. So I would like, this is going to force you to be yourself, really. This is going to force you to show your brand because you cannot talk about thriving groups. So what you're going to do is you're going to make a post, say it's a makeup group. Um, you're going to make a post like, Hey guys, I've been using this foundation. I love it. Um, but I feel like it's not giving me full coverage. Can I get tips on, on foundation or whatever? And people comment, you're going to obviously have conversations about the makeup in the post, but like start making conversations about different things enough to where you feel like you can go add them and they're going to be like, Oh yeah, she's really cool. And they're going to add you back. Um, I'm just going to keep saying this until literally um, I'm blue in the face. I love at Palooza where they said, be a professional friend maker. That is literally what we do. That is summed up. That is our business, professional friend makers, because it really is a numbers business. Um, it is about how many connections you make and how many genuine connections you make. Friends means genuine, like literally learn about these people, get to know them. So in these groups, that's what you're going to do. Um, I like to call it react, comment, add where you, you know, you react to their comment, you're replying back to them or whatever, and then you go and add them. Um, sometimes now a lot of people like to ask difficult questions. Okay, well, it doesn't give me the add option. Well, then move on to the next. If it doesn't let you add that person, oh, well, just don't add them. Um, just different thing. Oh, I got kicked out of this group. Okay, go join another group. Like, it's just, it's just very simple. Um, just keep it moving, keep it moving. Make friends, make genuine connections by starting conversations. Don't force it don't bring up thrive don't think when should i transition this literally lead from your heart people can see if you're not genuine people can see if you smell money on them you, you know what i mean like um and also go after people who um i guess you'd say like intimidate you like i i want to go after like someone i can learn from someone who i'm like whoa they would be so valuable to my team i love meeting people like that and honestly i can make better connections with people like that because i can ask them questions i have i can learn a lot from them like let's say they they have a career that i'm interested in i'm like you know what do you do that's so interesting like tell me more about it people love to talk about themselves keep asking questions do not make the conversation all about you you can relate you can throw in maybe a story about yourself to relate to what they're talking about but like keep it on them end with a question end with the question all the time keep it going but also don't be afraid to say like hey I'm I'm going to take my son to therapy right now like do you mind if we continue this conversation later because I'm really enjoying like connecting with you that's something that you can do too and they're going to be looking forward to you reaching out again versus you just randomly going pop up RCM four days later you know and making that follow-up so I think that's pretty much what I have to cover on that. Um, Josh, you can go ahead and talk about your content. I'm sure I'll have a lot to say about that too. Yeah, I wanted to talk about the groups too because I feel like sometimes people don't know what groups to join. 
think about like your brand. What are you into? What do you do? Like for me, I'm like dog mom fitness, stuff like that. Um, and one thing that I started doing in these chats is like, okay, there's so many dog mom pages and there's so many different types of dogs. So what I do is I'll go to the search bar in there and I'll put French bulldog and bam, I know how many people I can relate to about Frenchies. I know that I can go to them to talk about, you know, the Frenchie struggles. Like I can relate to them more than other people. So those are the people that I, I guess kind of target when I'm like commenting on their post, liking their post. Um, and just like Carly said, your goal isn't to go in there, add them and talk about, you know, thrive. Your goal is to basically build that friendship. So for me, it takes a while for me to add them just because I don't want them to think like, oh, who's this random adding me? So like, I'll comment on their stuff a few times, then I'll add them and then bam, they're in my network of, you know, thrive, working out, and then they get to see my dogs. Um, so I wanted to touch on that. And then I like that you said, like, don't talk about yourself because that's how you bore a person immediately. Like in the beginning, one thing that I always did, it was like, you know, I would tell them about myself. And then once it transitioned to Thrive, it was like my Thrive experience, but I really wasn't listening to them or their needs. So I easily just lost them. Um, so just like she said, don't talk about yourself unless you're relating, unless you're doing like your three Fs. I think that's the perfect time and probably the only time to talk about yourself unless they ask you something. Um, and then I wanted to talk more about like adding friends because I thought Carly was going to talk about how to delete people. I just want to give you guys some like tips on how I go about adding people. Maybe you guys can use this. So I always look at like who's who we have neutral because I don't want to, you know, steal anybody from anyone. I always look at pictures. I don't want someone to have like a blurry picture or maybe like something that's not even them. Um, I always go on like their page preview and I like to look, okay, what type of stuff are they sharing? Because I am not trying to get spammed with like the junk stuff. Um, so those are really good things to look for when you're adding people. Um, always look through your suggested. That's like obviously the easiest. I wrote down to go to Facebook groups and basically what I said, which, which person are you going to vibe best with? You don't want to just add all these people. You really want to get to know them in the group before you bring them in. Um, and I wanted to talk more about branding today. I know I brought it up last time. Um, but this is something that like is so important because this is basically what you're going to be sharing and talking about all the time is like your brand. So really think about like who you are, like, don't think, okay, well, so-and-so is posting about this. So I'm going to post about this. No, like you post what you want to post. Like you're your own person. So what, who are you? Like, what makes you happy? Really think about that. Um, what do people think about when they, when they hear your name, that is what you should be posting because that's who you are. That's who people see you as, or if they don't, I mean, obviously brand yourself in a way. So they do see you like that. Um, content always, I brought this up last time. You want to motivate, you want to inspire, you want to be positive. And I forgot to say teach. I think this is the most important thing is because you want to be someone who's constantly offering value, which is, you know, which whether it's like a motivational post, you know, pumping them up, making them feel good in the morning or actually teaching them how to do something. Like I kind of went out of my comfort zone and was posting like recipes, posting like quick workouts people can do at home. Like people like that. You want to be someone that people go to when they're trying to do something. Um, well, let me see. So if you're feeling dry, which I think we can all relate, there's been times where we're like, what the heck do I post? What do I do? I've had so many times where I've messaged Courtney. I'm like, I'm done. Like, I don't know what to post anymore. If you're feeling dry, never stop learning. Read a book, uh, listen to a podcast, um, you know, sit down and isolate yourself. Maybe you're overstimulated and you can't even think, like take time for yourself to kind of figure out, okay, let me ground myself again to get back in there. You know, like what was it? Um, slow down to speed up type of thing. Um, take notes of everything. My note section, I swear, if a stranger took my phone, they would be like, what the heck is this girl on? Like, it's just random thoughts. Like, I, I wish I could, well, I probably can go on and read it, but I'm not going to do that. But it's just random little words and sentences. And when I read it, I'm like, oh yeah, I had that thought today. Let me make a post about it. So whenever I like have a free time, like before bed, even sometimes if I'm like on the toilet, and I'm taking a while, I'm like, I'm just going to type up this post. I'm going to put it up tomorrow. Use your note section. Um, like literally think of like little random thoughts that you have. Like um, I know when we were in Florida being around everybody and like hearing people talk, I would go into my notes and be like, this is going to be a really good post. Like I'm going to turn this into like a lesson or I'm going to turn this into like something positive and it's going to be good. Um, take your own pics, but don't overthink it. So pictures are nice. You want to have like good quality pictures and stuff like that. Um, but don't overthink it. I don't want you to be like, oh, I didn't get a good picture. So I can't put this post up. So 
I am like obsessed with Gary V, Gary Vanderchuk. He's like an entrepreneur. He has all these businesses and stuff. He has really good podcasts. His Instagram is like always fire. And one thing that he said that I'm never going to forget is like, he doesn't care too much about pictures because, or he doesn't care to be like flashing pictures because it's really not about that. It's about the content that you're posting under it. Like, what is your message? That's more important. Um, so the way that he described it, he said like, instead of posting like me getting on my private jet, eating a five course meal, um, I would rather post a black picture with a really good message because how are you benefiting from me showing off? Like, I would rather teach you something than do you be like, oh, I'm never gonna have that life and like not touch them, like impact them. Um, I'm almost done, I promise. Always be relatable. Again, you don't wanna put yourself off to be perfect. You wanna be someone that someone can say like, oh, I totally get what she means by that. And I think a really good way to be relatable is to really try to tell a story, paint a picture in your post. Um, something that I do when I feel like, um, you know, I'm not really getting to a specific audience is I will literally type out a post, like I'm talking to my old self, like I'm talking to my freaking overworked, freaking coffee shaking old self, like I will literally put a post up like that. And I feel like those posts are really hard for me, because it's like, I don't like to think back then. But at the same time, I get so many people on in my inbox, like, I needed that. And when you get that feedback, it feels good. So try to talk to the, the old you. Were you tired? Were you cranky? Were you hating your job? Like, what was it? Um, again, like Carly said, don't be afraid to use your heart. Don't be afraid to show emotion. Um, and I think the biggest thing when creating content is like, get out of your own head. Like, don't overthink your content. Um, I used to say, you know, Instagram posts should only be like once a day, put four posts up a day. Um, Gary V, again, I'm obsessed with him. He said, like, think about if you're going out to hunt something, hunt an animal, like deer hunting. I know most of you guys are from Louisiana. Um, you're more than likely to kill a deer when you shoot a freaking 80 times versus eight times. So put your shots out there, your content. So that's what I want to talk about. I personally think content is the most important aside from building relationships. Um, Carly, did you want to like touch on any of that? Yes, um, I love everything you just said, like all of it. Um, okay, so I use my notes too. So I wanted to touch on like, if you see somebody on your friends, on your newsfeed or something, you want to RCM, you don't have time, you don't have time to do a genuine connection, y'all. Do not RCM if you don't have time to do them genuinely go write their names down in your notes and go back to it because I would so much rather you spend time doing one genuine connection than 12 that mean absolutely nothing and you're probably going to get left on red because it wasn't genuine and they can tell so use your notes to do that um also wanted to just real quick when you add people aside from your people you may know I love adding people from other people's statuses so uh, there have been people that put, like don't poach my friends list like okay I won't post your friends list but I might poach your statuses so like on um, my friends on Facebook let's say they post like what's for dinner tonight like what's everyone having for dinner I'm gonna go on that status I'm gonna not only comment but I'm gonna go and start conversations with the people in there like oh my god that sounds so good can I message you and get that recipe boom message them get the recipe add them now I made a new friend and they might be from another state they might have no mutual friends so this is a whole brand new cold market you can open up just by doing that and I am this is my famous saying use voice messages voice messages are the best way to connect with people if you send a mama a voice message in the morning and you are all hyped up and you're RCM in like a status she posted she's going to be like, what the heck is she on? She must've drank 17 cups of coffee. And then she goes to your page and she's like, oh, she's on that Thrive stuff. And she might be like, oh, one of them. But eventually she's going to be like, okay, I want to sound like that in the morning. So use voice messages so people can hear that you are genuine. Um, but that's all I have to say next week. We are going to completely dive into closing the sale. So like all of our tips and tricks on closing the sale. Personally, I have learned myself a lot from Jocelyn on closing the sale. So I cannot wait to do this with her next week. So y'all stay tuned, get as many people in as possible because this is a huge struggle for a lot of people. We're going to try and minimize how many follow-ups that you have to do to close the sale. All right, y'all. Thank you. Do y'all have any questions or anything before we get off? I just want to say thank you because this energy that y'all just put out is like got me like okay well I'm about to just go RCM the whole world <laughs> genuinely <laughs> yes thank you all right y'all y'all have a good Friday